BFM 89.9, I'm Audrey Raj with your World Cup Quickie. We are just hours away from the World Cup semi-finals. Brazil versus Germany is happening at 4am. Oh, this is going to be a biggie. Brazil will be without Thiago Silva, who is suspended due to a second yellow card. And of course, Neymar, who suffered that horrific fractured vertebra in the match against Colombia. But they have a special weapon. It's a Pomo man! Man Jigama priest. Yes, you heard me right. This voodoo priest has promised to curse Germany to bind some of their best players' legs so that they can't run on the pitch during the semi finals. Let's see if it's gonna work because apparently he did the same for Colombia's James Rodriguez, but that obviously didn't work out because the Colombians still managed to score against Brazil. The Bomo, however, did not say which top players he will be cursing, so I guess Tony Cruz, Mesut Ozil, the big guns, you guys better watch out. The winner of that match of course will play either Holland or Argentina in the final Holland by the way have problems of their own they've been thrown out of the team hotel all because they arrived a day earlier than expected so I guess the early bird doesn't really get the worm does it I'll bring you the first finalists of the 2014 World Cup tomorrow morning but first here's Lynn Thank you, Audrey Raj. Good morning, everyone. These are your BFM morning headlines. It is Tuesday, July 8, 2014. I'm Lee Chuilin. We start with a big story. The New Straits Times have gone with Khalid under siege. Close call! Discussing how the rumour mill was churning yesterday with news that Tan Sri Khalid would be resigning his post as Selangor Menteri Bursa, um, having tendered his resignation to the king and all that. As you can tell from his unhappy face, he didn't do that. Now, there are also further stories by Sina Harian wondering, Kurja um, Lots of questions being asked right now as to who it could be. Um, Pages Insight suggests it is an inside job. Speaking of Selangor, we also have soup kitchen closure leaves reps hungry for answers. Again, the Malay Mail killing it with their front page. Um, there's punnery, there's a really great modular look to the whole thing. And the story, of course, continuing the ongoing saga of soup kitchens in KL um, with more questions for our ministers. Coming from MPs of Bukit Bintang and Serdang saying has this been thought out enough? Have we figured out an actual solution and how are we going to provide for people once soup kitchens aren't allowed within a two kilometer radius or whatever? And now looking at something that's national instead, the star have gone with a call that's a con. I want to say clever punnery but actually just, I don't know, it looks like some sort of ad for Cellcom. But I think this is not new just as last week's coverage of being able to buy your license isn't new. Similarly, um, I think many of us have been receiving phone calls like this. They're essentially saying you get an official sounding call, saying your credit card's been used, and they say they're from Bank Negara or from Bukit Aman, and before you know it, life savings gone. What the Star's front page is saying is, don't be scammed, follow these steps. We have Operasi Lebih Aggressive. That is a story about um, the illegal gambling machines that have caught the headlines over the last few days or so. Now, I'm not sure you're able to focus because you're looking at that photo, right? I know you are. You're looking at that photo. And that is a man with a one meter stick um, through his forehead. It happened in the morning yesterday. And in case you must know, it was a stick that escaped from a wood cutting machine. So, you know, if there was ever a cautionary tale not to stand too close to something, that would be it. And there, that little box there. We also have the story of how Yusuf Haslam, film producer, thwarted attempts to rob his house this morning with a gun. Um, and the funny thing about this is he was the producer of Garak Has. So, you know, the papers are running crazy with that. We have a story here about how investments made, investments, now I'm not the one using this, uh, the sun actually is, investments made by the Paralympic Council um, of up to 4 million. It's unlikely that they're going to recover these funds that they invest um, through Paralympic Ventures and Durian Berhad, which is a company owned by Zainal Abidin and his family members. So it looks as if um, money that should have been used towards putting our Paralympic sportsmen and sportswomen into better stead, now gone just like that because Malaysia Bole. In happier news, abducted girls flee from Boko Haram. Um, up to 60 girls have left. So there is that. There are little rays of sunshine, people. But I also wanted to point this out over here because this is an example of Malaysian punnery that I think you just can't get anywhere else. Kata Kaiser! <laughs> it's what Franz Beckenbauer has to say about the World Cup. It's a little column. And I'm just telling you, Kata Kaiser, you can't get that in any other language. And Harian Metro finally have gone with the least flattering photo of David Luiz that I've ever seen, and that's saying a lot. But more
more importantly, it's also looking at stuff that's going on during Raya and Ramadan um, with apparently people paying up to 50 50,000 ringgit to rent a Ramadan stall in the markets, which is just completely crazy. The papers are full of scams today. I'm not sure why that is. When realistically, it's supposed to be a month of truth telling and giving. Um, instead, what we have is taking away of innocent people's money. With all that darkness, my word of the day, in case you haven't guessed, or my phrase of the day is Kata Kaiser! Because you know what? World Cup fever is still on and also I just really appreciate things that can be done in our language that can't be done in any other. You've been watching Morning Headlines, I'm Lee Trilin, BFM 89.9.